<laughs> it's typical, isn't it? As soon as I want to start talking about the Gancho, they turn on the lawnmower. Hi guys, Sandy from The Paddle School here. In this video today, we're gonna to talk about an overhead that is not often discussed, but is used at the top level all the time, and that is the gancho. That is actually the Spanish word for it. It's a shot that you hit over your head like this. And we're gonna talk about why you should use it, when is an effective time to use it, and where you should be aiming with this shot. One of the biggest challenges I found coming to paddle was with the overheads. Yeah, there's obviously a wide variety, different purposes, intentions, things like that. So let us know down in the comments what you find difficult about the overheads and we'll see if we can actually make a video to help your game. So in this video, we're gonna explain why this shot, the Gancho, can actually really transform your overhead game. And it's often because players learn the Bandeka at the beginning, which I absolutely agree with. I think it's the, you know, probably the most important one to learn from the beginning. And they get so comfortable with this shot that they're trying to use it for any ball that comes up with a lob. Now, I know if you're learning this Bandeka at the moment and you're finding it difficult, trust me, one day you will get comfortable with your Bandeka, even if you're not now. Um, and then what happens is, whenever the lob goes up, they're always running around underneath the ball to play the Bandeka, when really, so often, they could use this shot to keep their opponents in the corner and to regain their position. So the intention of this shot is like the bandeja, yeah? So the ball is coming over you as a lob and it's usually coming to your left side and you play this shot to regain your net position. You play it at a medium to low speed to force your opponents to the back of the court and give them a difficult ball so that you can then kind of capitalize and get that net position back. When it comes to the technique for this shot, now, it's more often played on the right-hand side of the court, mainly because the ball will more often go over the left side of the body, yeah? Either the ball is being lobbed from the cross court or from the center, and even sometimes down the line, if the lob is going towards the center, the ball will come over the left side of the body, whereas on the left-hand side of the court, the ball is lobbed more often to the open side, to the right-hand side, and therefore they can use the vibra or bandeja from this side. So. This ball is going over to the left side. You immediately go into this overhead position yet yeah, where you turn your shoulders, you lift your arms up. And instead of moving your body to the side of the ball and playing a bandeja, you actually end up playing over the top of your head with a straighter arm and making sure that you contact in front of you, contacting slightly down and hitting through the ball. Yeah, that is the kind of technique for this shot. So if you're on the opponent's side of the court, the target for this shot is most of the time towards the glass, yeah? Either towards the glass or towards the fence, so that it's bouncing, it's hitting the glass, and the ball will die at the back of the court here. Sometimes you do see it down the center of the court, and often you can see it from the left-hand side of the court that players play this ball down the line again. Because the contact is high, the ball will actually bounce higher at the other end than a bandeja. Yeah, so you want to make sure that you get some part of an obstruction involved, whether it's the fence or the glass. Um, that way it can be difficult to defend. Now I can probably hear you saying, why would I use the shot above a bandeja? If the bandeja keeps the ball lower, why do I want to contact above my head like that? You know, my coach is probably always telling me that I need to contact lower with a bandeja. Now, the reason you would use this over a bandeja is a few reasons. First of all, if the lob goes up and you're gonna use the gancho, it is because the ball is gonna be relatively central. Remember, it's coming over your left shoulder, yeah? So this is one of those times when it comes over your left shoulder and not in a situation where your partner has the time to come across and hit a vibra. Or maybe they have time, but actually strategically it's not a good thing to do. So this goes over your left shoulder, which means if you wanted to hit a bandeja properly, you would have to move all the way to the center to hit your bandeja. And that leaves a load of space for your opponents to hit into. It doesn't give you time to recover back to this position. So contacting the ball over your head like this means that you can actually regain your position a lot quicker and most of the time you're going to hit this cross court towards the fence and the glass like we mentioned and therefore your position will be two steps in front which is going to be a lot easier. The other difference is that if your contact is here versus a contact here the difference of a few feet means that you can actually be further up the court yeah if 
because obviously the ball, the trajectory of the lob is coming down. If you want to contact the ball for a bandeja at this height, you know, you're going to have to be, say, here on the court, whereas with the gancho, you can be two steps in front and contact higher. Therefore, you're closer to regaining your net position again. You also can get good force on this shot, and this is also why you see it so often at World Paddle Tour level, because players use that lob over the left shoulder more often. They're a bit more accurate with the lobs, and you see this gancho at both men's and women's World Paddle Tour level a lot. So if you want to bring the gancho into your game, one of the biggest things to do is to hit the shot with purpose, with intention. Yeah, because so often players learn this and they end up contacting kind of with the racket face open like this, and then it kind of floats up for your opponent, which is not the idea of this. The idea is you're getting into a position and contacting still in a kind of downward direction so that it's gonna force them into that back corner. You still want the second bounce to be near that back glass if you can, yeah? So if you want to bring it into your game, any lobs, particularly if you're on the right-hand side of the court, any lobs that kind of come down this channel, down the middle of the court, practice stepping over and hitting your gancho like that. And the more you practice, the better you will get at it. If you've got the opportunity to get someone to feed you a basket of balls, then it will be much easier because often it's difficult to practice these things in a match. Like we said at the beginning of the video, it can be difficult understanding the different types of overheads. So on this side, I'm gonna give a link to our overheads course where we go through all of the different overheads, the gancho included, and I'll also link to a video about the difference between the bandeja and the vibra, yeah, so that you can kind of learn more about the overheads so that you can put them into your game.